Hello, in this tutorial we'll talk a little bit about how to create a discussion forum or a discussion board using Course Sites Learning Management System. Here we are in our course shell and we're on the module 1 and we're going to build a new discussion board in module 1. Now the first thing we do as good instructional designers is to develop our ideas in a Microsoft Word document or a text editor so that we can easily modify, move things around, rework them. And the other most important thing that we do as instructional designers is align all our design work to learning outcomes. So here we are in a fictitious class that I've just made up about e-learning and we're in module one where they look at mod different models and uh, and examine how the practices are appropriate for learning populations. Now the module learning outcomes for this module one is to explore e-learning models that support student success and module learning outcome two demonstrate two instructional strategies that support student success in the classroom. Okay, so I'm ready to think about this discussion forum and it's going to support the activities I've already developed for this module. And when you develop a discussion forum, you want to give students the background around why, this, why they're doing this activity and then instructions for how to do this activity. And that's pretty much true with all lessons. Give them background about why this activity is important, why they're doing it, and then step-by-step -step instructions for completing that assignment. So uh, here's the background. In this module, you've learned about e-learning models and um, now you're going to describe two instructional strategies that support students as inspired by one of the e-learning models you've explored. Okay, there's the background. Now, for the instructions, you want these students to describe two instructional strategies in the classroom as inspired by those models they learned about. And for each strategy, they're going to include a general description of the topic and lesson, provide a description of the lesson activity that demonstrates the model, and describe the model they used and how their activity represents that model. And there's always the please reply to at least two of your classmates. Okay, so I've created this discussion forum in an easy text editor and now I'm ready to build it into my classroom. Okay, let's, let's design that discussion board. Here I am in my module one. I have the edit mode on. And the first thing I wanna do now is go to the tools pull down and there we are with a discussion board. I click on discussion board. I have one discussion forum there already. It's a testing forum. I'm going to create a new forum. And the name of this forum, lucky for me, I have already typed it up right here. I like to put the type of assignment and then the name of the assignment so, so that students that, uh, have kind of a heads up on what it is they're going to do. So discussion forum, colon, and then the title of this discussion forum. I do that with surveys and assignments. I go assignment, colon, then the name of the assignment. If it's a journal, I'll say journal, colon, name of the journal. And it gives students a heads up as to what kind of assignment they're going to be uh, jumping into. All right, now we need the description of our discussion board, and lucky for me, I have that too. So I'm gonna go grab my background and my instructions and paste those right here. And here we are, here it all is. Now one of the things that you can do with course sites is you can drag down and increase the field, your working space, by just pulling on this little corner here up and down, so that gives you some more room to see what you're working on, okay? All right, that's, it's as simple as that, and now we just have to specify the instructions for how we're going to let, let students have access to this board. So first of all, we want to say, yes, this board is available now. I want it to be available throughout the entire class. There's no date restrictions. Uh, I don't want students to have to create a thread before they can see the rest of the forum. I just want it to be completely open. I'm going to grade this forum and I'm going to go ahead and give it five points. And 
I do want to uh, see the participants that need grading. This is a grade book activity, so don't worry about this right now. Now this has to do with subscribing, allowing students to subscribe to the forum via text or email so that when somebody posts to the forum a new post, they have a heads up so they can go right in and respond. Uh, so this gives them the option to do some of that. So I'm going to allow members to subscribe to the forum. Uh, I'm going to actually allow them to, yeah, to just subscribe to the forum. You can have them subscribe to threads and not the whole forum. I'm going to say the whole forum, okay? And I'm going to include, I think I'm going to include the body of the post in the email so students can read it right there at the convenience of their email and decide whether they need to go into the classroom and respond or not. I'm going to allow the author to delete their posts. Now this is kind of a big deal for some instructors. I like to allow people to delete the posts as long as no one else has responded. So if I go in and goof up a post, I want to be able to delete it and start over if I have to. Um, but if I goof up and then come back two days later and people have responded, then it's not appropriate to delete that post at that point. I also want to allow the author to edit their own published posts. I always feel that, you know, if you go in and you spell somebody's name wrong or something, you can go back in and fix it. Uh, I want them to be able to create new threads. That means they can create a brand new topic and have other people come in and respond to it. I want them to uh, be able to upload files to demonstrate what they're talking about or to support what they're talking about or uh, offer resources. So allow file attachments and uh, allow users to reply with a quote if with the quote. So when they reply then the previous post is in quotes so I know this person who's posting is not their quote it's the quote from before. Okay and just say submit and there it is, Discussion Forum Models for Instructional Strategies. I'm going to select that forum and I'm going to say Next. And okay, so now uh, it's asking for some more text. I'm going to say Submit and show you what happens if I don't put anything there. All right, as usual, Course Sites puts your latest item at the bottom and here it is discussion forum models for instructional strategies now uh, this is where I want to show you uh, let me move it up a little bit here I'm going to move it to where you can see it a little bit better right under lesson activity okay so this is where uh, we notice that there's nothing under it there's no description under it this is where we we left that text field empty. I'm going to go in and add a little something to that text field and this gives students a head up, heads up. I'm going to grab my introduction or my overview, put it here, and now in the classroom, I go back down, and we have a little introduction to this activity, a little description of it, and there it is for students. So that's why I like to make use of that text, that last text field that's presented to you before you go out and complete your discussion forum. Okay? All right, let's take a look at what that discussion board looks like. I'm going to click on it. And here we are in the Course Sites discussion board. And I've always had a little bit of confusion around how to use their discussion boards because it doesn't give me the instructions right away. That's another good reason why we created the instructions in the Module 1 page. So uh, again, here's the instructions, clicking on that link. And I br I'm brought to this kind of blank page. And what I have to do as a student is to create a new thread. And now the instructions and background are presented. Okay, and then I can create my new thread, um, new student thread. And here is my response. And then I post it. 
and here it is right here. Now one way to avoid that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that thread and say one way that you can avoid uh, students coming to this page and not knowing what to do and how to get started is for you as an instructor to create the th first thread and just say um, welcome to the discussion board to this discussion board and then you can say you know have uh, some instructions like uh, to get started click on the th thread tool you know something like that and then ju that just gets your students started okay and so then once you submit it students will come to this page and it won't be blank there will be the instructor welcome to this discussion board okay so that's one way to get around that confusing little introduction to discussion boards all right there you have it a discussion board in or a discussion forum in your first module and you're good to go thanks and see you later